talk about it here right quick. As soon as I hear the clock down there. Hey, what kind of gasoline are they running and all this stuff? Because this new stuff so bad. Well, there's the chime. So here's what I'm running in this engine today is Coleman camp fuel oh, really? or white gas. It has no lead, no additives. It's just straight gasoline. That's what have been available to Henry Ford at the time. And it, that was a byproduct of making kerosene. So it was used as a cleaning solvent for the railroad and machine shops like Armington and Sims. So I'd like to welcome you all to Henry Ford's kitchen sink engine. And this is a replica built by our staff at the Armington and Sims machine shop that I have behind me over here. So our uh, historic uh, engine mechanics it was built, built this. right over there? Yeah, right over there. Over there. Over there. Sims. Yeah. So they built this replica for we, us to demonstrate. Now, what's unique about this little engine is in 1893, Henry Ford at that time was working indirectly for Thomas Edison at the Edison Illuminating Company in Detroit that we have a small rendition of here in the village. That original power plant was on the corner of Washington and State Street, downtown. So Henry Ford, by 1893, after two years, worked his way up to being the lead engineer at the power plant. And while he's working there, he has a notion of building a horseless carriage. Like so many, uh, probably hundreds of other people at the same time had that idea. But he had the feeling he could follow through and he needed a power plant or power source to drive his horseless carriage. Now I've ruled out steam, you have to have a boiler and water and fuel and all the stuff you have to carry and if you don't monitor the boiler correctly, it could blow up, it could kill you. So uh, battery cars were, uh, they weren't that reliable in 1893. So he's been reading about Augusta Otto, who in the 1870s invented the internal combustion engine. And he thought, that's the ticket. That's a small compact tank. So he gathers pipe and tubing and a discarded hand wheel off a lathe, and things that had access to and he assembled everything in that little workshop there that was behind a two-family duplex the family was renting at 58 Bagley Avenue in Detroit. And he's tinkering with this thing in the shed there. And then on Christmas Eve, 1893, Henry Ford makes a major breakthrough on his little engine. He's now ready to start it for the very first time. But he can't do it alone. He needs the help of his wife, Claire. And she's in the kitchen cooking a large Christmas dinner for her side of the family, the Bryants. that are coming to see the new baby Edsel for the very first time. He's not quite six weeks old. So she's not coming out of that kitchen for nothing. So what does Henry do? He drags this engine into the kitchen and clamps it to the sink board or the kitchen counter. Then he needs a, an ignition source to create a spark, right? So he runs a wire from his makeshift spark plug up to the electric light socket hanging from the ceiling. And then he runs another wire from the engine to the water pipe to ground it. So now he has 110 volts DC current to create that spark. Then he asks his wife, Clara, can you quit basting that turkey you're working on? I need you to drip some gasoline into this intake valve while I spin the flywheel. So let me show you what would have happened in the Ford kitchen on Christmas Eve, 1893.
This four-stroke <laughs> internal combustion engine made from simple hardware store items that are available to anyone. Yeah, let's build one. Yeah. I wonder if I could get one of them mounted on my feet. <laughs> well, we could strap this thing on to you and we'll see what happens. What do you think? So does this piston have rings in it? It does. So I'm going to show you the whole thing. So, uh, 